and what they do, right? So now Allah gave us the prescription to remain on uh, you know, remain away from heedlessness in this ayah. But Allah Azza wa Jalla goes forward, and this was one general, specific example of Bani Israel. But this is a problem not just of Bani Israel; it's a problem of all of mankind. So Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَى أَنْفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَى شَهِدْنَا." Allah Azza wa Jalla speaks, and I'll, I'll briefly illustrate. When all of us were created in the form of ruh. And Allah Azza wa pulled us out from the back of Adam alayhi salam. And He made us all witness over one thing. He made us all aware of one thing. Am I not your Lord? And all of us, Allah quotes us. Qalu, they said, who's they? It is us. All human beings. They testified before Allah, bala, of course. Why not? Shahidna, we bear witness. And then Allah Azza wa gave us a disclaimer. He made us say this, that He is our Lord, but then look at the profound statement He makes. He says, أَن تَقُولُوا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ I made you do this, so on the day of judgment, you don't have room to say on the day of resurrection, إِنَّا كُنَّا عَنْ هَذَا غَافِلِينَ Without a doubt, we had no idea. We were ghafil, we were unaware, we were heedless about this promise. You have no room to say this anymore because Allah already made you aware of it. SubhanAllah. Look at this, this, this declaration of the, the consciousness of the human being that Allah put inside the fitrah of the human being. Or Allah says you will make other excuses because of your ghafla instead of admitting your fault when you come before me on the day of resurrection. He says, أَوْ تَقُولُوا إِنَّمَا أَشْرَكَ آبَاؤُنَا مِنْ قَبْلِ You're going to say our parents' fault. They were doing shirk before us. It's not our fault. They raised us as mushrikun. وَكُنَّا ذُرِّيَةً مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ And we were the children after them. It's not our fault. It's our parents' fault. Don't blame us, blame them. And then the people will say, أَفَتُهْلِكُنَا بِمَا فَعَلَ الْمُبْطِلُونَ Are you going to destroy us because of what these wrongdoing people did? These, these people who put us in a state of lying, in a state of falsehood? Are you going to put, punish us because of that? So people will make excuses. And since Allah quotes this excuse, what is He telling us directly? That these excuses are useless. The, the reason He made us testify, أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَا شَهِدْنَا Am I not your Lord? And we all testified. After that, these two excuses, that I had no idea, or that it's not my fault, it was my surroundings, it was my parents, it was my upbringing. That's the reason I messed up. N neither of these excuses are valid anymore. Allah invalidates both of them. But then He says, وَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ Or actually, كَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ This is how we explain and clarify the miraculous signs, the ayat. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ So they may return. Meaning return from their state of heedlessness, return from their sleep, and they return to being awake again, to, being, to realizing their reality. Allah Azza wa Jalla speaks of a person then after this, who is Muslim. First He speaks of Bani Israel. Then He speaks of all children of Adam. Then what are these two lessons for? For who? For the Muslims. The Qur'an is revealed, and who is reciting this Qur'an? Who is going back to this Qur'an for guidance? It's meant for mankind, but the people who consult it are the Muslims. So Allah speaks of the case of a Muslim. He speaks of the case of someone who claims to be in Islam. And not just a Muslim, a knowledgeable Muslim. Allah Azza wa Jalla speaks of a person who knows. You know, you might know or you might be the case himself or herself. That you know something is wrong and you still do it. You, know, you might know people that know the halal from the haram. They know the right from wrong. They know what to look at and what not to look at. They know what to say and what not to say and they still do it. And so Allah Azza wa Jalla speaks of this person and says, وَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأَ الَّذِي آتَيْنَاهُ آيَاتِنَا Recite, read on to them, narrate on to them. The news of someone who we gave our ayat. Allah says we gave this person our ayat, meaning this person had clear knowledge of what Allah Azza wa Jalla wants. فَانْسَلَخَ مِنْهَا And the wording is very profound. He says, this person who Allah Himself gave him knowledge, he slithers out of those ayat. In silakh in Arabic is used when a snake sheds its skin. And Allah speaks of this, this person who's covered in the knowledge of Islam. He's covered in the ayat of Allah, he knows this stuff. And what does he do? He slithers out of it. Despite knowing it, he makes his life different. فَانْسَلَخَ minha. And so Allah gives us this ugly image of a person whose shell is that of a knowledgeable person. Whose shell is that of a person who knows Islam or portrays himself as a Muslim. But that's just the skin that he's already shed. In reality, that's not his skin, that's not his reality. So he says, 
فَأَتْبَعَهُ الشَّيْطَانُ فَكَانَ مِنَ الْغَاوِينَ Now when he leaves the ayat of Allah, what has he left? He has left Allah as his wali. He has left Allah as his friend and guardian. So then when Allah leaves him too, then who's left to follow him? Who's going to be on his case following him, trying to make him go the wrong way? It will be shaitan. So Allah says, when he slithers out of the ayat of Allah, this knowledgeable Muslim, this knowledgeable believer, when he decides to, to go astray, then the shaitan follows him, and he becomes from those that are confused and lost. وَلَوْ شِئْنَا لَرَفَعْنَاهُ بِهَا SubhanAllah. Allah says, if we had wanted, we would have elevated him by that knowledge we gave him. Because of those ayat, this person could have had a lot of elevation. In Allah's eyes, imagine, you know, there's elevation in our own eyes, right? Somebody has more respect because they're older or more knowledgeable or scholarly or whatever else. Allah says, we would have elevated him, meaning Allah would have given him higher status in his own estimation. That Allah would consider him noble. Just because of the ayat Allah Himself gave him. But then he speaks of the tragedy and says, وَلَكِنَّهُ أَخْلَدَ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ However, this person, he inclined towards the earth. He was stuck to the earth. He remained directed towards the earth. His goals were lowly. This is the image being provided. His goals were worldly, pathetic. He just went over things that will give him immediate pleasure. That's all he wanted out of life. وَلَكِنَّهُ أَخْلَدَ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهِ and he just continued to follow his empty desires. And just a sl slight comment about empty desires, Allah Azza wa Jal put these desires inside of us as, as part of our fitrah. زُيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ حُبُّ الشَّهَوَاتِ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ وَالْبَنِينَ وَالْقَنَاطِيرِ الْمُقَنْطَرَ مِنَ الذَّهَبِ وَالْفِضَّةِ وَالْخَيْلِ الْمُسَوَّمَةِ وَالْأَنْعَامِ وَالْحَرْثِ Right? Allah says Himself, زُيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ These things, the love of women, the desire for women that Allah put in men, houses, horses, now horsepower, not horses, right? Cars. Investment strategies, you know, all of this stuff, Allah put the love of it inside of our hearts. But this person, out of that love, what did he choose to abandon? He chose to abandon the ayat of Allah. And so Allah gives his example. And he says, فَمَثَلُهُ كَمَثَلِ الْكَلْبِ مَثَلُهُ كَمَثَلِ الْكَلْبِ His example is like the example of a dog. Look at how ugly the example is. Again, this is not a kafir. Who is Allah talking about? A Muslim who knowingly becomes disobedient, becomes ghafil. Allah gives His example like the example of a dog. And He says, إِن تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْهِ يَلْهَثْ أَوْ تَطْرُكْهُ يَلْهَثْ If you beat this dog, if you put something on this dog, it's panting, it's drooling. And if you leave it alone, it's still sticking its tongue out, it's still drooling. Meaning this person becomes so pathetic, even as a human being, that whether they're hungry or not, they're thinking about food. Whether they have the desire or not, they're looking at shameless things. Whether they have to or not, they're using foul language. Meaning, you know, sometimes you do things because you really, you're overwhelmed by desire, and you're, you know, you want, you, ha you want to do it, and you say, I was overwhelmed, I was seduced into this act, or into this statement, right? Or I stole because I was hungry. But he becomes like a dog. Whether he needs to or not, he's pathetic. He just does his, fulfills his desires, and forces himself to fulfill his desires, even if he doesn't feel the need. ذَٰلِكَ مَثَلُ الْقَوْمِ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا This is the example of a nation that deliberately lies against our ayat. They know they're the truth, they still lie against them. And so Allah says, فَقْصُصِ الْقَصَصِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Narrate this to them clearly, in an eloquent fashion. Make this clear to the people, so they can think deeply about their own lives. يَتَفَكَّرُونَ To think deeply. And it really refers to reflecting deeply on your own life experience. Your own thought, your own state when you wake up. Your own state when you go to sleep. Sa'a مثل القوم مثل القوم What a horrible example. A nation الذي كذبوا بآياتنا The nation who lies deliberately against our miraculous signs وَأَنفُسَهُمْ كَانُوا يَظْلِمُونَ And even in regards to their own selves, they were unjust. Who did they wrong? They didn't wrong Allah. They don't take anything away from the, the dominion of Allah. When we do something haram, or when we abandon an obligation of Allah, when we disobey Allah or disregard Allah, or not care for what Allah wants us to do in this life, or lose our purpose in life, then who are we wronging? Who's, who's being harmed? No one else except ourselves. So Allah Azza wa says, مَنْ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ فَهُوَ الْمُهْتَدِي Whoever Allah would guide, then He is the one who has been guided. We come back to the same point. Allah gave us the prescription to stay awake. He gave us this book, إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ يَهْدِي Without a doubt, this Qur'an, it guides. It guides. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابِ لَا رَيْبَ فِي خُدَلِّ الْمُتَّقِينَ Guidance. 
This is what Allah sent. So Allah says, whoever Allah guides, He is the one who has been guided. One has to seek guidance from this book constantly, over and over again. It's called Qur'an for a reason. Qur'an means something read over and over again. You can't just know, I know about Qur'an, I know I've heard the ayat before, or I've read it cover to cover, or I read it when I was little, or I know the meanings of this, these lessons, I've already read tafsir. It's not like that. The word Qur'an demands that you read it over and over again. You seek guidance over and over again. It's not something that you can fulfill your relationship one time.